guys. Happy Thursday, guys. <laughs> take off the screen. <laughs> um, so yes, as Sylvia said, my name is Phil Osophical. And uh, to give a little background, I, <coughs> I went to Penn State my freshman year, which was two years ago. And um, I met some really cool folks who were planning a bike trip across America. And uh, a lot of them were graduating. So after they were going to graduate, they're going to go on this huge bike trip across America. And I became good friends with them and I started going to their planning meetings and I was getting really excited about this bike trip. But I was like, my parents would never <laughs> let me take time off of school to bike across America. Um, but then as time went on, I saw more and more that this trip was going to be really awesome. So I snuck away and uh, signed the papers to take a year off from school without telling my parents. And um, and then about a month after that, um, that was in March, and I ended up telling my parents and they freaked out. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but we started from the East Coast on uh, June 7th in, in Delaware, and then we biked all the way through Pennsylvania and um, <coughs> over through all the cornfield and soybean states, which uh, most of them start with I. <laughs> Illinois, Indiana, and Iowa. It's just the only change of scenery is that the corn and the soybeans switch sides. That's like the highlight of the day. <laughs> um, and this shirt is actually the shirt that I wore during the entire bike trip. Um, I started <laughs> I started the trip with like three different shirts because we couldn't pack that much gear. Um, but we slowly realized that it was more efficient to just wear the same clothes every day. And uh, so you might notice the front of the shirt is a little bit darker than the back of the shirt because the back of the shirt got a, a suntan, <coughs> well, a, a reverse suntan, um, so it's lighter. But anywho, um, yeah, we, we biked all the way through the corn and the soybean states and um, then we went up to Yellowstone National Park, which was really incredible. And um, along the way, we were exploring sustainability. And so we were visiting all these different farms and communities and eco villages and learning about sustainability and really what that means. And um, we also just wanted to meet people in all these different states and really explore if Americans are even good people or not. Um, and we realized they are, Americans are awesome people. Like my mom was freaking out when playing the trip, like you're gonna get taken advantage of and people are gonna try to rob you and you gotta bring your bike lock cause you're gonna get your bike stolen and all this stuff. She's like, she watches like four hours of news every day. And uh, <laughs> And it's just, she's so, that's what she believes the world is a scary place. But during the bike trip, um, our realization is that we think 99% of people are really nice and are there to help us out. And then the 1% who's not really nice, this doesn't have to do with Occupy. This is <laughs> but the 1% of people who are, who are not very nice, um, they are the ones who then make it on the news and then the news condenses all these 1% evil people and makes it seem like that's everyone. But on this bike trip across America, we met lots and lots of nice people who cooked us dinner and let us stay in their backyard. And um, we basically think Americans are awesome people for the most part. And uh, so we ended up making it all the way across America. We made it to the ocean all the way up in Oregon and then we rode down the coastline all the way to San Francisco uh, which is where we ended the trip and I actually made it 99% of the way on my bicycle <coughs> but um, in Northern California I was cruising along the highway one morning and I got hit by a car at 60 miles an hour and uh, I had a near-death experience, which was pretty wild. I I thought I was com I completely thought I was gonna die. 
I hit the pavement and I felt like I was melting into a big white ocean for a few seconds and then I came back to life and it was a pretty wild experience. I have a, a nice little battle wound to prove it. Um, but anywho, that's a little background information. Um, during the bike trip, I, uh, I started, we would have all this time every day. You're on a bike for like eight hours just cruising down the highway. So you have all this time to just think about stuff. And um, I go by the name Philosophical and I like to see philosophy as basically just asking questions about stuff. It's like questions are more important than answers. And um, so on the bike trip, we're basically just thinking about random shit all day long. I mean, you're biking down, there's nothing else to do except like learn how to beatbox, which I, uh, I kind of start to practice. So I'm just gonna do some beatboxing. We can relax for a little bit. I normally have a microphone. Beatboxing sound much cool. It sounds much cooler on a microphone, so I'll have a pretend microphone. <laughs> Cruising down the highway. Riding across America. on a bicycle too if you didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a little bit of what we would do every day just making up random songs and stuff and uh, that's when I started to get into this thing called flowetry because um, I felt like, right, let me get a little bit more water here. <laughs> So as I was biking, I, I would feel like rhymes were kind of just like floating through the air as we were going over the Rocky Mountains especially. It was like the rhymes were just floating through the air and I had to, to capture them in my brain and bottle them up and then share them in other ways. Um, and there was just so, so many inspiring things we encountered and um, these rhymes just started coming to me and it seemed like uh, the best way to express all the things that we learned and experienced was through this form of flowetry. So I will now share some flowetry after I catch my breath. Been doing too much talking today. So, can I actually hit the hookah? I think that would be a nice little, uh, <laughs> nice little pause. What flavor do we have over here? Uh, Tenacious C. What does the C stand for? <laughs> okay, so this is called Transition Town Flowetry, and um, I'm wearing a shirt from Transition Pittsburgh, or Peaceburg, as I like to call it. Um, So the, the transition town movement. Does anyone know what the transition town movement is? <laughs> the shyest little hand. Do you want to explain, perhaps, what you think? Uh, what I, I mean, the transition town movement is all over the world, and it's people gathering together to try and live um, in a way that is pretty much zero impact on the systems around us and just completely self-reliant and a cooperative community that is just very positive for everything. That's a pretty good explanation. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, different, it's different in different parts of the world, um, but there's, 
I think over a thousand different transition towns all over the world. And basically it's all about relocalization. So getting all your needs met at a local level. So different places are growing their food locally. They're producing energy locally. They're making things locally instead of getting everything from China and Walmart. They're making their own clothes and sewing things. And they talk a lot about reskilling, which is relearning all these skills that we've lost in our super modern uh, world. So it's a pretty cool thing. And we, we, we encountered a lot of transition towns while biking across America. So this is some transition town flowetry. Do you have the drive to create a world that's vibrantly alive, a place where all species can thrive? Well, this here is a gathering of the tribe. Is the nine to five shift gripping your soul? Tired of drifting with the flow of the status quo? Then paradigm shifting is the way to go. Come take a glimpse down the rabbit hole. See, we live within an invisible fence. Everyone's walking around tense, conditioned by our own parents to focus only on future events. But then we miss what's right here on this big, blue, beautiful sphere. Gaia's got a message for us to hear. Do you have headphones in your ear? The message that Earth has given me is that we must use our abilities within our own vicinities, allow our creativities to abolish negativity. Nature saying, mimic me and rejoin the symphony. And if we use permaculture techniques, we'll be having a fresh feast within the next couple weeks. And you may think I sound outlandish, but I don't want our species to vanish. Already billions are famished and ecosystems consistently damaged. But if you take a step back, like Hubble, <laughs> this is Hubble up here, amidst all of the serious struggles, People are stepping out of their bubbles, coming together and forming big huddles, coming up with solutions to our troubles. So many brainstorms, it's creating puddles. There's a change coming. Can you feel that we're near it? A revolution of mind, body, and spirit. A coalescence of our heads, hands, and hearts. With you and I is where the change starts. So if you feel caged by an isolated feeling, sacred plants may initiate the healing. <laughs> Layers of separation, you will begin peeling. Oh, and did I mention? If you use the power of intention, then your life becomes your own invention. And if you take the time to reclaim your mind, you just might find that all of life is intertwined like an ayahuasca vine or the kundalini in your spine. And so I'm here to validate, motivate, and co-create. Because every day on earth is a day to celebrate. And when we all meditate, we let blissfulness radiate and demonstrate what can happen when we all collaborate. <laughs> what time do we have here? Ten of Still now? Still now. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was some transition town flow tree. Does anyone have any questions?
I'm all about asking questions. Does anyone have any questions they want to quest questify? <laughs> Let's get at least one question in here. What's something that you do not have any clue what the answer is to? I don't claim to have the answer to pretty much anything. I think that questions are more important than answers. So what's something somebody's questioning these days? What's our purpose? What's our purpose? Who's our? question. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think you can pretty much, you can ask a question and then you can question the, the questions within that question. It's just kind of like a question. Let's get another question in here. <laughs> what are you questioning, Mr. Well, <laughs> questioning many, many things, but uh, probably the most pressing would be when will I have the time to make my dreams happen? Somebody else, what are you guys? <laughs> no, 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 that's a great question. I don't know that. I don't know. That. <laughs> You're a philosophy major. What are you questioning? Nothing worthwhile. Nothing worthwhile. Questioning whether philosophy is a worthwhile. Oh, I already know it's not. That's okay. Uh, well, what's your opinion on ESPN? ESPN, well, is that extrasensory perception now? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> um, let's get like, one more question. I believe that kid. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Bernadette, what are you questioning? Questioning if this education is worth the very major amount of money that I'm spending on it. Mm. I'm going to try not to think about that. I'm <laughs> questioning it every day. Sweet. Yeah. I have a question. I'm questioning why none of us feel like we can ask questions. 